Hello, Nacogdoches. Welcome to this edition of Jack Talk. I'm your host, Ashlo. On this episode of Jack Talk, Alpha Phi Omega talks to us about a hot SFA tradition, and I literally mean hot. Also, this time of year, we're a little, we're, this time of year, little goblins roam the streets and houses become hunted. And a young lady shares how she spreads self-awareness to her peers and youth. All next on Jack Talk. Every year during SFA's homecoming, service organization Alpha Phi Omega is in charge of building the bonfire. The bonfire is one of many SFA traditions. Joining me now is Alpha Phi Omega Public Relations Chair and Webmaster Aisha Williams. How are you doing today, Aisha? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining us today. No problem. Now, I wanted to know, how do you describe your role as Public Relations and Webmaster? Um, my role basically... I'm in charge of the Facebook page, the Twitter page, the Instagram page, and I basically just let the public know when we're having events. And as far as public relations, I'm the one who's out and about getting sponsorships throughout the community and making sure that our name is known through campus and the community. Okay, now how long have you been a part of Alpha Phi Omega? Um, this will be going on my second year because I crossed fall 2011. When did the bonfire become a homecoming tradition? Over 40 years ago. Over 40 years ago? That's a long time. <laughs> it is. Now, I was out there, and I seen you guys have a lot of wood, like a lot of wood panels. <laughs> a lot. Where do APO get the materials to build the bonfire? Well, actually, they're donated through local businesses throughout the community. Um, starting in the spring, our service VP, Brianna Walker, she will call the local businesses and they'll donate to us. And so they're all donations. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> that is so nice. So how long do it take to build a bonfire for homecoming? Whew. Depending on the height, this year it's taken us a little over a week. A little over a week? Mm -hmm. So do you guys start, are you guys out there at a certain time? Or do y'all start certain days? Yes, our building hours are from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And every day. Every day? <laughs> every day until it's finished. Now, how do you guys take safety percussion um, building the bonfire? Because I saw it was, it was students out there that was actually, you have to walk on top of it. Mm -hmm. So what are the safety percussions in case someone fall, get splinters, things like that? Oh, just basically be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can really say. Just know where your edges are because, you know, we will, like how we build it, it's set up like steps, and mm -hmm. so we're able to still climb to the top and still keep building. And so just watch your edges, be careful. Like, I actually got cut last year, but, you know, it's a war wound. It's a war wound. <laughs> it's, a, it's a war wound. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you guys allow other organizations, I know APL is the head of it, but do you allow other organizations to come out there and help out? <laughs> Or is it just APO? Yeah, we try to keep it strictly for APO for the fact that's how we get our hours. Like, it's more for us to really build that brotherhood and mm -hmm. bond as a fraternity. And so we try to keep it strictly APO. Strictly APO. Okay, now I have a question. Um, <laughs> when I was out there, I saw this object in the middle of the bonfire. <laughs> and it was, it was in the air, and I thought it was really unique. I called it, like... I called it a birdhouse, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't a birdhouse because it had a door on it. So what exactly is this object? 
Um, the, ob the floating object <laughs> is the outhouse and the physical plant actually builds the outhouse and our potential members as well as active brothers, they will go and paint it. So as you probably saw, on one side there's a gray wolf, on one side there's a yellow rose, on the opposite side there's BGG, which there was a crown there, and then on the front side there's SFA, and basically these represent the different families within the New Sigma chapter here at SFA. Okay, so speaking of that, the New Sigma chapter, is are there three different names each year? No. No? So it's the same the same names yes. over? So what are the deciding factors of members joining those families, those three families? It's determined by who your big is. So like when you come into the organization as a potential member, you're assigned a big. And so it's, you know, the little brother, big brother program. And so whatever family your big is in, that's what family the little is in, as well as, you know, the grand big and the great grand big. And so it's a lot of history in it. A lot of history. <laughs> it's a lot of history. So I have a I have another question pertaining back to the bonfire. Have anyone ever tried to go out there and set it on fire before the homecoming tradition? As far as I'm aware, no. no. But we do have people who are there at all times of the day. We do spend the night out there just to make sure that nothing like that is to happen. Oh, okay. So um, once it's completed, being built, are there any special ceremonies before the actual, before, you know, the rest of SFA is out there trying to, you know, enjoy the fire? Do APO do any special ceremony? Um, not really. Only thing that we really do, like, after is after we actually light the bonfire, we'll gather up in our circle and we'll sing our toast song. And how does that go? <sighs> well can't really talk about it on television. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> so, oh, oh, you don't have a singing voice? <clears throat> Just not today. Not today. Not a little, today. A little weather. <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> so um, when, are, when, when can people join APO? Um, we have our membership intake process at the beginning of the fall semester. And occasionally, if we have a spring line, the spring semester as well. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on Jack Talk and letting us know about Bonfire. And so, <laughs> it went too far. Okay, okay, um, well thank you for joining us. And I wish APL the best on continuing building the SFA's homecoming Bonfire. Coming up next, we have, coming up next, we have running, and it's October, so do you guys know what that means? Find out how the spooky event Nacogdoches has in store for you, next on Jack Talk. Hello, I'm Saray McCoy, and today we have Ronnie and West here with Nacogdoches JCs. How are you guys today? Wonderful. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So you guys are with JC's, correct? Yes. Deck of Dutch JC's. Which one y'all want to tell me a little bit about JC's? Go ahead, Ronnie. You're the man. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, the Deck of JC's were a community nonprofit organization um, built from local businessmen, mm -hmm. different uh, community members that are looking for a way to give back to the community. Uh, we do local events like the bowl for kids we do events like turkey smoke we do a christmas courtesy every year mud run mud run was big that was new mm -hmm. this year and of course you know the whole reason we're here is we have the nacogdoches jc's haunted house you guys do have the haunted house yes how ma long has the haunted house been around oh it's been around much longer than we have yeah uh, at least is it 20 years yeah, it's been longer than that has it been longer than yeah. that really? they, had it, they had it at the uh, expo center for a real long time mm. um i've been involved about seven years now we were at the expo center for a few years and then now we're at the nacogdoches mall the nacogdoches mall behind, it's behind the nacogdoches mall correct yes ma'am it used to be bells a long time ago it's in if you walk inside the mall you're looking directly at it or if you drive around behind the mall, you'll see a big banner. It says Nacogdoches JC's Haunted House. I've actually been a few times and I really enjoy it. Wonderful. So when does it start? October 24th, it opens at 7 p.m. till we pretty much scare everybody off. So, and then, so, so it it's gonna be every end. night from October 24th until, until Halloween. Every night? Yes, ma'am. So how long have you guys been preparing for it? 
Because it's right around the corner. It's been, we've been going, I guess, construction for the haunted house itself started two weeks ago. So, so the you construction got goes, it started a couple weeks ago now. Just like any other event, we have so many different sponsors, and mm -hmm. Mike Love joined the, you know, joined the group a couple uh, last year, I guess, and really made a big difference, and became the name sponsor and really put more money into it. But we start planning almost as soon as some, you know the haunted house ends. Yeah, we start for the next year because we oh, work, wow. of course, with the Sigtals here on campus. Okay, and they do a lot of you know on campus advertising for us, and they do a lot of the build out for us and they'll be in there working it with you as well or working okay. with us as well. So as far as planning it, like how do you guys come up with the rooms? Cause it's not easy to scare people. <laughs> Actually, we do a lot of research. We go to different haunted houses around East Texas. You know, we'll make trips, look around. We look for, you know, what's popular in the media, whether it might be zombies or, you know, or movies on that are playing on certain fears. You know, if there's certain spider movies or something along those lines, and we put a lot of research into how to lay out a room to get the best response. Because if you're going to come out there, you're going to bring your friends and your family. Yeah. You want to enjoy it. You so, don't go to a haunted house to, you know, hang out and have a picnic. So we've got a lot in store for mm -hmm. you this year. So speaking of the best responses, what are some of your best rooms that you guys have had? That you guys personally think y'all have had that's probably scared people the most? Clowns. The, cl the clown room's always, the clown room is always, always a winner. Everybody, people. it seems, and, and what's great about the clown room is, you know, there's a bunch of people scared of spiders. There's a yeah. bunch of people scared of snakes. But it's typically the big burly guys that are scared <laughs> of clowns. Which is funny, and I have a friend that's terrified of clowns. Mm -hmm. And we took her about last year, the year before that, and she almost died. It was like the funniest thing in the world. Just that, and the clown actually like came behind us when we was walking. But you wouldn't think yeah. grown people would be scared of clowns. Yeah, and uh, those people are just fine through the whole haunted house until they hit that room. And then it's, it, it just hits that one fear that they have. So we've broken those fears out and try to place each individual one in each one of the rooms. So we'll hopefully we're going <laughs> to get we're gonna get everybody. So have y'all had people cry before? We have had people yeah. ask to shut the haunted house down and be escorted out. <laughs> um, we've had people fall on the floor. Um, it's, it's, it's a very good time and the great thing about this year and something we try to do every year is uh, we try to restructure it. We try to change the layout because we don't want you to get bored with it. We mm -hmm. do have a lot of people that you, you know, you've mentioned you've come a few different times. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a new experience every single time. There are a few rooms that just work that are going to be there from last year, but there's a bunch of rooms that are new. Yeah. So even if you've been there and you think, hey, I already know what JCs are going to do. You're not going to be prepared. You switch it up. It's going to, it's changed quite a bit. So you guys mentioned that Sig Tall helps you guys out? Oh yeah, the Sig Talls are great. Uh, just manpower alone, they get out there and it's really great to get all the guys and great response. And we've been working with them as long as I've been a JC yeah. and much, you know, much longer before that. Um, they'll always come out. We had a build out uh, three weeks ago on a Saturday and they brought I don't know how many people they have in their practice, really? but almost everybody. And they were just everywhere really working. They, they do a great job. Okay. Great job. Well, Wes, what's your position in the Honey House? I'm director of marketing, so we've done all these wonderful little handouts. We've got okay. all the posters. Did y'all just pass around that? Yeah, the sign out on University Drive, just promoting the Haunted House itself. Okay. Um, going and getting sponsors. So you, I, do, you do the fun part? Sort of. <laughs> I mean, so you, you always wear several different hats because you're, you're going to go build, you're going to work the haunted house, you, you, you're going to do anything that has to be involved with it. And, you, know, you throw your input in on each one of the rooms, decorate this, watch out for that when you're walking people through. Sound yeah, easy. So, yeah. so I heard um, earlier you guys mentioned about SFA night. Yes, or SFA night, night, Monday 10 29th, SFA night to get a dollar off. And uh, if you bring this card or you just SFA ID, and you uh, get a we'll be off. sure to scare you. <laughs> How much is it usually to get in the um, general admission? It's ten dollars. Ten dollars mm -hmm. for all ages, mm -hmm. which is pretty good for honey mm -hmm. house. Yeah. So, um, what else was I going to ask you guys? You said it runs to what time? Till it just till it closes? It, it as it goes along, we start out typically. Uh, does it start on a Tuesday or Wednesday this year? This I'm year. I'm not sure. I know it's I know it's the 25th, but uh. Normally, when we first start, we'll run to 10, 11, 12 o'clock. But as we get closer to Halloween, sometimes we're there till 3 in the morning. Is Halloween your busiest night? Uh, Halloween yeah. is typically our busiest night. And, you know, on Halloween, if it's 11, 12 o'clock and you're thinking, man, I hate that I missed it, 
I promise you, you didn't. <laughs> and we will stay. We stick around. We stick around yeah. to make sure that everybody's come and gone. And uh, so we everybody's don't mind waiting. safe. What? You mentioned about people falling out. Do oh, you yeah. guys have an ambulance on site, just uh, in case? We've got a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> we got a hearse. We don't have an ambulance, but we got a hearse. Y'all have a chainsaw we, got we, don't, we don't have any doctors, but there's a lot of people dressed up as them. So yeah. we're covered. So, so y'all covered. Insurance? Yes, insurance? Of course. Ish. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> you have people dressed up as insurance people. We do. Well, we have, we have a... Just me. Yeah. Wesley. He is actually an insurance agent, so we got some loopholes. Okay. We'll be okay. So before I get out of here, I'm going to ask you guys, is there a certain age limit? No, ma'am. There's not. Of course, with being scared, we like them to be at least, you know, 13 and older. But if, if mom and daddy's going to let them go through there, then we're going to scare them. There's nothing uh, inappropriate, if you will. So mm -hmm. it's not something that you've got to worry about bringing your kids to that you're going to say, oh, my God, I can't believe the JCs and the Sigtals did it's this. It's family right. fun. It, it's family fun, but we really take it to the extreme as far as the startling, the fear. And we want you to be excited and, for, you know, of course, scared. All right. Well, thank you guys today for being here with me and taking out your time. Be sure to make everybody go to the haunted house so they will be scared. So, do you guys like to be different or stand or, or your standout person? Promote self awareness. Coming up after the break, find out what BEU products will compliment you with joy. You guys will not want to miss this treat. Coming up next on Jack Talk. Hello, I'm your host, Joy McElroy. Today I have Ash Lowe to incite us with her unique gift and why it is so important. Hi, Ash Lowe. Hi, Joy. Um, we have a video that we want you guys to watch, so t stay tuned. Be you with Be You Accessories, custom made by Ash Lowe. Each product is made with a message to promote self-awareness. Rock it your way or any way you want. Products range from necklaces to keychains. It's a great way to promote your organization or just yourself. So show the world who you are with Be You Accessories. Be bold, be extravagant, be young, be outrageous, be unique, be you with Be You Accessories. So, I definitely love that video. I saw your buttons in there. Yes. Very, they were incorporated really good. So what are BU Buttons? Well, BU Buttons is a way that I basically promote self-awareness. It actually stands for something. It stands for be bold, be extravagant, be young, be outrageous, be unique, be you. And the buttons are just one way, but there's many of fashion accessories I have. Okay, so what made you start doing this? What made me start, um, when I was a freshman, I realized that it was a lot of people, I'm not gonna say just at SFA, but I seen a lot of people not being themselves. Like it's people I came here from high school with and I realized they changed just to fit a certain yeah. characteristic. And I wanted to figure out a way that I could promote self-awareness to let people know it's okay to be yourself like it's okay to be weird or be do what you do because I'm just that type of person like I do I be myself no matter what so do you think that you pushing your buttons it's kind of getting it out there and helping people kind of understand oh you know this is who I am forget what anyone else says this yes. is me Yes, I do believe that um, they promote and push people to be their selves because I don't create any button to be the same. Like each button I make, every button is customized. And I tell people when they're ordering a button, I'd be like, um, make it unique, make it your favorite color. And there's like, for instance, Hello Kitty. A lot of girls love to get the Hello Kitty mm -hmm. button. And I tell them, you know, change the color of the bow. What color do you want the eyes to be? You know, it's unique to fit your personality. Well, that's really good. You don't see anything around here. And then, you know, we, us being an SFA and yeah. it's so small, you kind of see the same stuff all the time. So that's pretty neat. I think that's cool. When did you Thank start you. making the buttons? I actually started last year. Well, it, last year's spring, I was making them for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I was trying to um, figure out like a marketing plan to promote it um, to the campus. So I didn't start selling until last year fall like promoting it to the campus and 
my peers and everyone else. Okay, so do you make do you only make buttons or do you make any other accessories? No, I um I make more than buttons. I make necklaces, I make earrings, I make hairpins. I made some products where um, I make anything that you can basically <laughs> ask for. If you want something on a stick, I've done that before. <laughs> for someone, he wanted a mustache on a stick, mm -hmm. so I did that. Um, basically, just anything someone requests. So what is the process of you making these products after someone places an order with you? Um, well, first, the if it's something that I've never done before, like I've done faces before, mm -hmm. I'll draw it first. I have like a sketch pad, so I'll sketch it out, and then I'll make sure that I have the colors. Now, some things that people requested, I wasn't able to make because it just didn't look like that object or that item. So mm -hmm. I will let them know beforehand, I'm sorry, but that was just, you know, too impossible to make because some things are too detailed mm -hmm. to make. Yeah. Um, but after that, after I like sketch it out and um, I'll send them a picture before I finish the product to let them know, ask them, you know, is this what you want? Mm -hmm. And most of the time I get good feedback. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah. And that makes me happy to know that they love something that I made. So, and then give it to them. I saw Jalea, you know, she had the F&M and yeah. then the earrings on that one girl that you said. Um, what are other buttons that you've made? Um, other, like I said before, I made some faces of people. Um, like I did logos. I remember doing this girl Smirk Time when she was a DJ. Uh, I did her face. Uh, I did. I do different characters, animals, names. Um, recently, I started getting like more creative. Like with F and M, this is an F and M pen, and the person said they wanted cheetah print and they wanted for it to be a little razzle dazzle. So <laughs> this is what I made for them. Uh, Let's see. It's just so so much to name. So much do you to name. do you have a set price or does it kind of depend on what what exactly they want? Like if it's big, will it be will it cost more? If it's smaller, will it cost less? Yeah, that that is the case. Um, originally, I had a starting off price at five dollars, but I changed that this year, and I've started started making buttons at a dollar, and. Actually, tomorrow on the yard, I'll be doing promoting doing a BU on the yard where buttons start off at a dollar. Now, the more you ask for in the bigger and the more detail it is, it will cost more. But I typically don't go more, go over twenty dollars. Okay, so um, what are the proceeds like? What do you do with the proceeds from you making the products? Okay, I don't spend any of the proceeds that I get because this is all. Um, this is the foundation of me building my company that I have for the future, which I want to do a um, I want to do a give back to the community, and I want to do a um, oh my gosh I forgot what it's called <laughs> for the kids. <laughs> um, basically, I want to open this company where there's four different departments. There's a fashion department, a management department, production department, and basically just give back. Okay, so as far as self-awareness goes, um, <clears throat> you feel like, do you feel like everyone, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Ashlo, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, that's all we have for today's Jack Talk. I'm Joy McElroy. Make sure you join us next time. Ask some Jacks.